So I see that a lot of new people are here. So let's start with the introduction and with the, yeah, well, let's start with the agenda. So uh, I'll introduce myself and the company very briefly. Then we will go through a couple of slides describing the general topic and the uh, important uh, parts of the, of the project of evaluating the residual lifetime for the structures with FEA. And uh, then I'll make a demonstration of the interface of SDC Verifier software and uh, crucial uh, functionalities of the software that helps us to perform the residual lifetime. And in the end, we will have a Q&A session. Uh, we already had a, a first session, a first uh, webinar on this topic this morning. A lot of uh, interesting questions. So feel free to type in your questions into the chat box into the uh, uh, global chat or personally to me or my colleagues and we will discuss these questions in in the end of this session so let's start with the introduction my name is Oleg Ischuk I am uh, in charge of the operational activity here at SDC Verifier I am a structural engineer originally I I'm, I'm with SDC Verifier company for more than 10 years already and uh, I'm joined here today with my colleagues, Petro Neck, who is uh, leading our marketing department. Uh, he will help us to, to make sure that everything runs smoothly with the questions, recording, and the session itself. And also today with us is Bogdan Solenko, who is in charge of business development. So in case of any questions, technical or non-technical, non you're free to contact him or myself. And in terms of SDC Verifier as the company, what is SDC Verifier? SDC stands for Structural Design Check uh, Verifier. So uh, there is two main uh, business units within the company. First one, SDC Verifier as a software. Some of you here are already users of SDC Verifier. Some of you are trying the software uh, at the moment or planning in the nearest future, uh, which is possible, of course. Uh, and uh, SDC Verifier is an extension to popular FEA programs like ANSYS Mechanical, SimCenter 3D, or SimCenter VMAP with Nostron uh, that helps to perform the structural verification according to rules and regulations within single interface of FEA models. So within the environment of FEA software, it is possible to perform the checks according to multiple rules and regulations, including the residual lifetime or fatigue checks. The other business unit of SDC Verifier as a company is a structural engineering consultancy. So we are selling the software, we are providing the um, opportunity to do the checks yourself. But on the other hand, we are always happy to uh, guide you or to help you within uh, or to help you to solve the the, the problem uh, within any kind of structure uh, uh, with our consultancy services so everything what i'm going to show to you today is available as a software and as a consultancy service feel free to to contact us in the future uh, and uh, let's get to the topic of this session so today we will speak about yeah, the topic is how much time your uh, crane, does your crane have left? So we are going to speak about the uh, fatigue problem and we are going to speak about the, the fatigue damage and the residual lifetime. So uh, all the structures that are subjected to repetitive loading and also the structures that are, that are welded, uh, also not, on, not only the complete structures, but also its components, uh they are experiencing fatigue and uh, they're experiencing fatigue whenever this uh, structures or mechanisms or equipment are working so the components of these structures they are having the finite uh, design life and this design life is correlated to usage and it's not correlated to the calendar time so structures consume their design life in work cycles and not in running hours. This is important to understand, and this is one of the core criteria of, uh, uh, of the 
of the economical part i would say of the of the procedure of uh, owning and maintaining any kind of lifting appliance or uh, structure subjected to the repetitive loading because um, this uh, uh, graph of expenses over a lifetime it's not linear so usually it is going uh, sorry usually it is going like this so um within the the certain uh time uh, as as soon as as the the, the time goes on the uh, expenses on maintenance on uh upgrades on modifications on uh, inspections are raising uh, because some fixes are necessary and and so on so regular inspections they help to identify the risks and to support compliance but their frequency and scope are not enough to to catch the failures uh, caused by frost uh, propagation of the cracks and uh, in any kind of machinery and likelihood of such failures it increases over time and it increases closer to the end of the design life so knowing the remaining design life of your crane and its component it gives you an estimate of the limit for safe operational life and it is based on it is always based on actual usage so operation costs they increase over time as crane needs more frequent maintenance and more spare parts and knowing the design life of your crane allows you to plan timely the modernization which which can extend the lifetime so usually if you have a graph graph like that and at a certain point you have the uh, modernization update or improvement which extends the uh, life cycle life cycle uh, lifetime of of your crane and uh, all of uh, this they reduce the operational cost they safely extend the useful life of the crane and if it's not done on time at certain point you have a problem which uh, makes the usage of the structure not possible anymore so if you will skip the uh, upgrade at some point you will get to the your your graph will be like this because uh, you will have a problem which uh, makes the operations impossible and every minute or every hour of downtime for the lifting equipment is very expensive so it's better and smarter to think up front it's better and smarter to uh, uh, understand the design life of your crane and make the modernizations on time and uh, be sure that you can continue the safe operations for significant amount of time as the sea verifier enables a uh, possibility to perform the checks and to verify this residual lifetime within the FEA uh, method. And typically, uh, the FEA engineers, they start with B models. They build, a, well, you can call this a digital twin, the computer model of the structure to simulate the behavior, to apply all possible uh, scenarios of loading, to be able to uh, to be able to run the analysis and usually this is the very beginning and this is the end of the analysis you receive some uh, strange utilization uh, some strange utilization factor numbers or usage factor or whatever coefficients which just highlight to you uh, the peak zones in your model which are very rough and not indicating the clear uh, location of the problem and also not indicating the solution for it so uh, with SDC verifier as both as a software as, and as a consultancy uh, we uh, are the evangelists of the different approach which uh, is uh, to build a very detailed models with shell or even solid elements in the locations that are subjected to uh to have some uh, potential pain points so um we are not ending the analysis at the at the 1d model stage 
we continue to very detailed plate model. And since the cracks are very likely to, uh, well, it allows us to get much more accurate results and it allows us to determine a correct results on welds because cracks due to fatigue are most likely to occur on welds. So it is possible to build a, with the, within the FEA program, it is possible to build a very fine mesh detail, which helps to uh, determine the welds, as the CVRFR has automatic recognition of welds within uh, such kind of models, and to indicate a real point of the damage and to indicate the real results in the weld. So you're not just having the approximate location of potential problems, but you have actual weld. You have quality of that weld and you have as the result either a fatigue damage or uh, even you can uh, make the uh, to get as a result of the check you can get the residual amount of cycles that structure is able to work so first and foremost it is important to build a dedicated model which will help you to indicate the peak zones and make sub models and detailed models of the peak zones to uh, evaluate the proper results. Next, a uh, big criteria which is important and I would say crucial for proper uh, fatigue analysis is uh, building a correct distribution of the workload over our structure. So since we're speaking about the cranes today, they have some sort of traveling load is it a trolley or a grab or a, uh yeah whatever a device is um we are uh, we are uh, working on i see some questions appearing in the in the chat we will answer all of those questions in the end but don't hesitate to ask during the session thanks so um uh this kind of structures they do have the uh traveling load and it's important to determine the positions of this load like this every place where the the, the, the spreader is connecting to the container where you have lift or uh, loading or unloading cycle since the design life is determined in cycles it's important to have as detailed amount of positions of trolley as possible and then as detailed as possible amount of distribu distribution of the cycles over the uh, over the length of the boom. So sometime my crane is operating, is lifting up here and putting in the back. Sometimes if we have a vessel here, we have containers stack on, on, on this uh, length and width, uh, width of the ship. And, uh, and we are lifting from one location, but always unloading in the middle or in one of the positions. Uh, you have the data from sensors, you have the data from analytics. It is important to, or if it's a new structure, because it's also important to verify new structures, to make sure it's built according to the specs, and also to know the, the predicted design life and schedule the maintenances, schedule the uh, inspections schedule the upgrades so it is not well most likely and very often we get requests for this kind of services when it's already too late when the crack is propagating when it's uh, huge and the, uh, the structure cannot operate anymore but it's never too early to perform the fatigue analysis because as i just said uh, you can uh, sync proactively and you can schedule the modifications based on the predicted design life and result of it is very precise i'll get back to this uh, later on showing was one of the slides and uh, in my demonstration that uh, result is very accurate and it's uh, uh, indicating the uh, the locations which are subjected to to fatigue damage but uh, we'll get back to that later so First is important of importance is a dedicated modeling approach. Second is uh, the uh, is taking into account the usage, the use cases, and the distribution of the load over the structure. Next part is the 
approach the analysis approach and every standard is prescribing well fatigue is most likely to occur on wells so every standard is prescribing the weld quality to assign the SN serve and to determine the direct stress range uh, for welds and SDC verifier is automatically detecting the welds on uh, shell and solid models to uh, determine this uh, fatigue class. So in some standard it's called notch class, in some standards it's the weld class or weld type. They are basically all doing the same thing. They are assigning the essence serve and they are determining the value of the uh, allowable stress range for the weld in certain direction or for certain quality for so certain time type of, of the weld. So SDC verifier automatically determines the welds, uh, weld tips, weld intersections, and uh, you can see it with different colors here and enables uh, an interface which allows you to, to set up the classification for the uh, uh, so since we are not only we are not only finding or detecting this weld we are also reorienting the stresses into the weld direction uh, so after the recognition is done we know the stress along the weld we know the stress perpendicular for the weld for shear for intersections and since intersection is always perpendicular for some direction it allows us to build and create a very detailed table uh, which is uh, assigning a proper weld class to a proper uh, uh, weld so three main pillars of the uh, fatigue checks within SDC verifier workflow is the dedicated modeling quality with uh, detailed models, the good distribution of uh, use cycles and uh, simulation of the behavior of the structure and approach that enables recognition of the welds and defining the type of welds for a precise evaluation. And uh, at this point, uh, we have to comply with rules uh, and regulations of a certain standard because fatigue analysis is not just a matter of predicting damage or a matter of finance but it's also an industry standard and within the library of SDC verifier software it is possible to uh, perform the checks according to multiple rules and regulations of the uh, certification societies or industry industry rules and regulation documents like euro codes or uh, German FKM code or uh, ABS and DNV and uh, so on. Uh, yeah, I see the question very, uh, yeah, I'll, well, I'll reply to that later also. Uh, about the standards, just remind me, Petro, about the standards uh, to be added into the library. Uh, the Accuracy of results is, since the modeling is very accurate, the uh, result and the, the, the definition of weld classes is very accurate, then the results are also determined within uh, centimeters or millimeters in some cases, and it's possible to uh, highlight the zones like this, which are, uh, this is one of our project and this uh, kind of crack. It is actually a 30 centimeter crack. It was under some sort of double ceiling, so it was not spotted during the regular inspections. But uh, after we did the evaluation and prepared the calculation report, we removed the double ceiling and figured out that this is actually a huge crack propagating in this area. So, um, yeah, results are precise and accurate. And it's possible not only to present what happened already to simulate the, the situation that happened to predict it uh, not to predict but to uh, upgrade the design for the future so there is a couple of cases first the problem problem has already happened and then uh, we can simulate understand why it happened and uh, propose the improvements sometimes it is good to think up front and schedule the maintenance of the 
uh, location or schedule, uh, schedule the change of the loading cycles if possible to uh, improve it. Uh, and the um, third thing is, uh, yeah, checking the design on the production stage to check if it's built according to the specs and maybe uh, improve that design in the future. Functionality of SDC Verifier not only allows to present this results in a very detailed manner. It also allows to uh, to build a complete calculation, complete automatic template based report uh, of the calculation procedure. So with the description of how your model is built, what are the uh, parts of the detailed models prepared, what are the results of general FEA, what are the results of details? What are the results of code check? And it is completely structured and template based. So if you have some fixes or it's not if, it's when, because you always have some last minute design changes, improvements, modifications, and so on. Uh, when you have to improve something within your design, it is uh, very easy to go back to the FEA, change the sicknesses, adjust the fillets, uh, make, modify the, the well type if necessary, recalculate everything and uh, build the same report once again. So it helps for the, as I already mentioned a couple of times, for the inspection plans, but also it helps for design uh, improvement and comparison of different design stages. And also sometimes we have modification projects when we have to compare the stiffness and the residual lifetime before and after modification. So we just put two reports aside, uh, one to another and uh, compare results before and after. So this is the problem we are facing. This is uh, what we need to do. We basically, an explanation why we would need to do that. And uh, what I would like to show you now is the interface and the, the model, one of the examples of the model and the interface of SDC Verifier that enables these checks and uh, how all the things are actually done. So we will use FEMAP. In this case, uh, Sim Center FEMAP with Nostron, but everything I'm showing to you today is also available for Sim Center 3D and ANSYS Mechanical. And the functionality is identical, just the source of FEA results uh, is different. Uh, this model is already uh, detailed, so with thin lines, I'll, I'll turn the thickness on now. This is a, quite a big model and I'm using a demonstrational laptop, so it might be a bit slow. But idea is that uh, we already built a BIM model, which we um, evaluated and figured out that we actually don't have much problems with, within the boom but in the legs and also in the modification area, it was a heightened structure. It has some fatigue damage problems, potential problems. So we built a dedicated detailed mesh at the bottom for the legs, for the pipe inserts, for, and it is also for the bolted connection, which is not the matter of this particular, uh, presentation, but it's possible to, to run the bolt checks for cases like this with SDC Verifier as well. And uh, not only the details are modeled, uh, but also the buggy sets we've done in the evaluation, which proves that detailed model of the buggy set has a significant influence of, on the stiffness of the structure. So sometimes uh, because it's often uh, in the simple models, buggy sets are just modeled as a stiff triangle here to build the, uh, to simulate the boundary conditions, but actually they have a significant influence on the stiffness. So we always recommend to model the buggy sets with the shell elements and as detailed as possible, because sometimes it's up to 25% difference in the stiffness results. So this model is representing the crane structure, but what is important to here to, to know and understand is the loading. So we do have uh, 48 different individual loads here and you see like the standard one gravity and then we have the vertical load, which is basically simulating the, the 
loading in the certain position of the trolley on the boom. So we have position one, and then this load starts to move. We have position two, position three, position four, moving along the boom and up till position 13, which is at the very back of the structure. So there is a vertical load, then there is a side load, which is uh, uh, gantry uh, inertia due to gantry movement. There is loads, there are loads due to trolley acceleration along the boom in the water side and land side, and obviously, uh, except of the own weight and operational conditions, there is also a wind load, which is significant for this model, and storm conditions, so on. So we have 48 different loads, and now it's time to go to SDC verifier interface, which I prefer to use. This is the SDC verifier interface, which I prefer to use as a standalone, but it also it's also possible to have it embed into the uh, FEMAP window or ANSYS if you use ANSYS. And SDC verifier project tree completely replicates the uh, tree of the model. We have a certain amount of loads, which is actually 39 because I believe in here some of the loads are skipped 27 29 30 33 to 43 so some of the loads are skipped it's not uh, properly numbered but that's not the case of of this demonstration so um we have a certain amount of loads certain amount of properties everything is read automatically from the model if the model changes you can instantly update the information from FEMAP by clicking this button. The solution is done with Nastran, and then we start to, to reprodu reproduce the behavior of the crane, and we need to, as I showed, we need to simulate the loading conditions and as precisely as possible. And as the Silver Fire for this enables an, op uh, an interface for linear combination of loads. So as you can see, for this job, 36 individual loads are used. And out of this 36 loads, we have 255 different loading combinations. It's possible to execute right click on it and check create edit multiple. And you will see the matrix of loading which is showing in the columns, you have every individual load and in the rows you have the uh, combination. So first column is a safety factor for check. And then each and every of this columns is showing um, the cases which are the individual influences and the cases which has any values are included into the combination. So first we combine some regular cases, wind cases, and uh, emergency brakes, stability. And then we also have the cases for fatigue when every uh, load is included in every position combined with gravity, combined with trolley accelerations, inertia forces, also full and empty trolley is simulated. And you, with these factors, you can simulate whatever weight of the trolley uh, or lifted load is available. So as you can see here, we have about uh, 250 loading combination. Software is doing the backup saves so and sometimes it stucks for a second. Sorry for that. Um, so as the Silver Fire has about uh, 250 load combinations in this case, but it doesn't matter. I know uh, it doesn't matter how many of these loading combinations you might want to have because sometimes it's uh, uh, hundreds of them. I have uh, I know some some of the customers of SDC very far. They're building up to four thousand of the loading combinations, and this case, these combinations are taken into account any uh, behavior that uh, any condition that might occur to the structure. And then the load combinations are combined into groups, which are envelope set of results. And there are some general envelopes, uh, also for different situations like stability cases and uh, strengths and so on. But what is important for us here is the fatigue groups, because this fatigue groups allows us to combine together the um, 
cases in certain positions. Uh, uh, so, for example, here we have the loads from position 1 to 13 grouped together. Here we have, have from 3 to 12, from, from 4 to 12, 5 to 11. So, similar to this uh, uh, diagram, we are grouping the cases together to be able to uh, assign a proper amount of cycles for this uh, groups here. And within the interface of fatigue groups, so finally we combine individual loads into load sets, included some of them into loading groups. And for the groups, we can create a fatigue group, which will indicate how many cycles occurred for the structure uh, for a certain, uh, so for the evaluation uh, period. You can build from 0 to 2.4 million cycles, you can build 10 million cycles and, and see the damage, or you can do the calculation the other way around and uh, calculate the residual amount of cycles after, uh, a, certain, uh, after a certain uh, amount of combinations has already occurred. So, uh, this is uh, this couple of uh, minutes, last minutes, uh, explained the idea of modeling and applying the loads and combining the loads within SDC Verifier. Now we need to verify the welds and to, to, to take a look on the check itself. So first of all, we need to determine the welds within this model because, as we mentioned, the fatigue is very likely to occur on welds. So we need to know where are these welds in our model and to do so, we go to recognition tab in SDC Verifier and search for Weld Finder tool, which in my case already has a list of welds recognized. But everything you have to do here is just to press a find button. And um, for uh, 1 million finite elements, it takes about a minute to recognize everything. For this model, it was about 40 seconds to find a list of, uh, well, it's thousands of welds here. And this, uh, if you're just working with the, any, any kind of structures, all you have to do here is press find and press OK. But this window has much more functionality than this. It's possible to add the welds manually, modify, remove, merge or, or splits, split. If uh, something, uh, on your opinion, something is not recognized properly, it's possible to make the adjustments by hand. So user always have control over certain actions. What we can also do, we can select all the welds and preview. Take a look what SDC Verifier has actually recognized as the welds. And within a second, in the interface of your FEA program, there will be a colored plot, which will indicate, uh, highlighted the elements which we determined as, as the welds. And you can see here that every every welded uh, part is uh, uh, highlighted and is selected. And uh, on the morning session, I had a question: How this recognition is done? Uh, basically, we have a couple of things uh, checked. So we uh, take into account every property change, every material change, sickness change, or a connection of a certain angle to determine the elements that are forming this connection as welds. And then we are reorienting the stresses uh, into the weld direction, so not in the global uh, coordinate system, but in the local coordinate system of the weld. And we know the stress along, perpendicular, and for shear, which allows us to create the classification. So after the welds are recognized, we just press OK. It will clear the results of the check, but not a big deal. Um, and we are ready to uh, perform the residual lifetime analysis and calculation according to rules and regulations. So to do so, we go to the standards uh, chapter in SDC Verifier. And what we do here, <coughs> We execute a right click on standards and select add, where we can add any rule from the library of already predefined codes. And we have uh, weld uh, checks and fatigue checks according to DIN, DNV, ABS, Eurocodes, uh, FKM, as I mentioned already. For lifting appliances, we have FEM1, 
001, very popular code for crane in the crane industry, especially, and so on. But uh, the thing is that uh, the calculation procedure is not the black box. So I have here here already the E N thirteen thousand and one created. What we can do here is uh, we can click on edit, and when you're creating a new standard, the wizard is always appearing because we still need a human being engineer to perform uh, this uh, analysis and to perform the checks. And uh, so we need to, the uh, user to indicate some parameters, which we cannot retrieve from the model automatically. For example, choose the method of calculation like limit state method or ASD allowable stress design method, uh, determine a specific resistance factor and every coefficient is having a description. So if you are selecting, you can apply a resistance factor for different portion of the model, different factors, but how do you know what is the value of this factor and what is this factor? You have a description here. Gamma SM is a specific resistance factor for material for static strains, which is uh, retrieved from chapter 5.2.2 of uh, the EN13001 standard. And it, deter it is determined in the following way. It's one for plate thicknesses less than 15 millimeters. If you have rolled materials, it can be 0 0.95. And for some unique cases, it can be up to 1.5. So you always know how to determine this. Also, you'll have to determine the other uh, resistance factor of gamma MF. And then uh, the important thing is notch class. We have a big classification here. Uh, notch class or weld type or uh, weld class, it is basically uh, uh, the selection of the essence group and, and assigning of the weld quality to, uh, the, uh, to the certain welds that are recognized. And it's, it looks like this. Uh, you are creating rules one by one, assigning a certain uh, notch class or notch stress up to uh, for every portion of your model and every next rule is rewriting the previous one. So first we say that our full model is 200 but all the other entities for shear are 112. All the beams are 90, uh, all the welds along the weld are 140, perpendicular is 63, for shear are 90, uh, then we also reorder the butt welds, and the weld intersections, and we can add some other rules. This is very complicated, but uh, yeah, you can create whatever uh, complicated uh, rule you might need to, and it will basically create the uh, something like this. It will assign a proper class to every weld in in your model. Uh, after you defined all of these parameters, you can also have control over the yield and tensile uh, values, which are read automatically from the model, but you can adjust them if necessary. And you press OK, the standard is created. Uh, and SDC verifier is not a black box. So SDC verifier uh, allows to take a look on the formulas of the standard and calculation detail. And every formula is open. So it's possible to follow the calculation. Moreover, it's possible to create your own standards or to modify the existing ones. So what we do, we use the results of FEA model as variables for writing formulas. So we are able to read some parameter from the model like yield or stress when we're calculating the utilization factor for static stress check, we're basically dividing the uh, stress in every element by allowable stress calculated as a uh, yield uh, divided by some value of, of safety depending on the class on the safety factor and so on. So you can follow the calculation procedure. You can convert the standard to custom and modify it if you want to. It won't be called EN13001 anymore, but uh, you have a control over changing it or you can write your own routines like automate the Excel sheets. By the way, speaking about the Excel sheets, uh, what is the, the difference? Well, skilled engineer can do the 
uh, residual lifetime and fatigue analysis by hand, but uh, with a hand calculation or spreadsheet, you are checking one structural member, one weld, for example, under one, or one element, under one loading condition. SDC verifier enables a verification of complete model under hundreds or thousands of loading combinations and uh, does this on top of the general FEA and uh, the general design uh, of your structure. So the uh, time saving benefit is obvious. The uh, calculation uh, procedure is clear and also it's much less room for error in this case. So it's easier to, to, to make a careful and precise calculation. And in the end, to present the results of uh, what we have actually calculated, this one we can remove, uh, to present the results of the check, to, to run the check actually, you would have to execute a right click on the check and select how you would like to present the results, either with a plot or table, determine what you would like to see, the criteria plot of uh, fatigue damage, for example, or the fatigue group one, which we just calculated overall for my complete model, and you press OK, this result is saved. And um, when you are uh, running the calculation first time, uh, it will take the time to run every element of our model through the formulas of the check, through this one. So since we, we know here that weld data and stress is calculated for each and every element, each and every weld. So uh, uh, the calculation time for this model of 666,000 of elements and for about, uh, how many do we have, 250 uh, loading combination, it is about uh, 15 minutes, I believe, on my calculation computer. And since we cleared the weld data and the standard information, it will, first time it will calculate it. So of, while we go over the questions, I will generate this plot and send it to you together with the recording. Uh, but uh, after we have the result, there is two more tools available in SDC Verifier. It is possible to optimize the design based on the uh, thickness of the element. Well, we have multiple optimization within SDC Verifier. It's possible to optimize the cross section of the beam element, the thickness of a plate, the thickness of the plates for panel finder, the weld parameters, and so on. And last but not least is automatic reporting. So SDC Verifier has a template based reporting, as I said, to build the documents in the way like you see here on this slide of my presentation. So this is the problem that we might have uh, or everybody who's working with the structures that are subjected to repetitive loading. We have to pay attention to the way we model, the way we uh, simulate the usage of the structure and the proper de determination of the weld classes and uh, applying proper S and serves to run our checks. The checks itself is, yeah, this, this webinar is very uh, general introduction to the interface. Uh, it, it is explaining the idea of what is capable. We have lots of information on our website, including step-by-step -step tutorials or recording of previous webinars where we dedicated uh, uh, where we do the dedicated demonstration and explain every parameter and explain, explain the ideas of the check. But I just wanted to indicate to you what is possible and how to present the results. We will start checking the, uh, we will start generating the plot right now. Uh, yeah, I will have to solve the model first, but uh, first I would like to answer the questions. And if you will have any further questions, you are, of course, more than welcome to contact us by the uh, details we have here. So uh, visit our website, subscribe for our social media, or you can call our support or me directly. Feel free to contact us within uh, any comfortable uh, way for you. Uh, I would like to dedicate this last 10 minutes to, to the questions we have. Petro, maybe you will help me. Uh, 
uh, and guide me through through the questions. Uh, there, the are, yeah, there are some questions. Uh, first one, uh, it, uh, is it required to model the wells in order to SDC uh, to detect them automatically? Or it will uh, detect considering the geometry? Ah, very nice question. Yeah, this is um, in terms. Of, uh, this is explain, uh, explaining the general workflow of the software. So visit our website or our YouTube channel. Everything is explained there. But uh, this is a good question. Uh, there is no need to model the weld specifically. As the CVR automatically detects the weld from uh, the uh, plate elements, taking into account a certain uh, connection type, so mesh connection. Uh, taking into account property change, material change, thickness change, and also <clears throat> uh, the connection of elements for a certain angle. Of course, you have to consider a dedicated mesh size. So please use the uh, reasonable size of the mesh to, to have a, a nice weld detected, uh, but also to keep your model within uh, uh, realistic amount of finite elements not having hundreds of millions of finite elements so usually uh, there is a code that is prescribing to model within a certain thickness also if you would like to do the hotspot calculation you might need to have uh, your uh, element size depending on the thickness of the uh, plates that you're modeling but in general there is no need to model the wells in specific way you just uh, do a shell modeling, shell mesh, and as the receiver far automatically recognize the elements from that uh, shell mesh and reorients the stresses. Thank you. Uh, uh, another one is uh, how can you have the fatigue results from nominal stress? Well, uh, yeah, this is basically a question. How do we determine the, the results? So we read the nominal stresses from the elements and then within the software, we are assigning the uh, weld class. So we are determining the uh, classification of weld according to the standard. And uh, after that, within uh, the calculation is still on that. And after that, as the CVR, since the uh, stresses are reoriented into the weld direction, we read the nominal stress, we know the allowable stress according to the standard, and we, uh, yeah, th that's why there is no need to determine a specific uh, weld type. Uh, we, uh, yeah, there is no uh, need to determine the weld type or weld size. You're just, detect uh, you're just defining the SNSERF and using the nominal stresses for the evaluation. Thanks. Do you will contact and answer your all questions yes uh, so feel free to send us an email to support at sdc very far possible to produce the remaining lifetime with a with these fixes in place uh yeah you uh, of course yeah Petro, you can answer this question as well <laughs> uh you can implement the changes or fixes or whatever in the model and run the analysis before the fit it's even better so uh, i have uh, the uh, uh insight on the go it's even better because uh you don't need necessarily to implement the changes immediately you build the fea model before the changes check the residual lifetime, then implement the change, let's say, uh, add the uh, stiffener here or increase the, the plate uh, thickness or do whatever modification might be needed. And after that, you just uh, run the analysis once again and compare the result before and after. So yes, of course, it's possible to take into account the modifications in your model. Question was from Alex. Uh, good afternoon for your consultancy services. Is your certification support solely on the structures of equipment and vehicles or on the vehicle systems as a whole? Uh, that's a good question. We are uh, experts in the structural part of verification. But of course, the complete project has also the machinery, equipment, gearboxes and stuff like that. And we are not doing this on our own. We are partnering with, with the best in this area. We work with multiple uh, companies here in the Netherlands and also around the world uh, that are helping with the uh, 
uh, gearboxes analysis, equipment analysis, mechanical parts, and so on. So if you need uh, someone for this uh, kind of uh, uh, evaluation, just uh, send me an email to Oleg or Oleg Ischuk at sdcverifier.com and uh, I will guide you to the right person or I will help you to set up the, the meeting with the consultancy team. Thank you. Yeah, uh, and few questions from uh, Sri Pradeep. It's the uh, first one you already saw. It's about uh, standard. Is uh, there an option for BS seventy six oh eight in the near future? Uh, there is uh, always an option, and thank you for uh, stating this. Our library is having like uh, thirty. Uh, 32 or 33 standards available and every major release we are adding something more with this one so every major release i mean every half a year so we every half a year we are adding some standards uh, this one we now focus on the joint checks and we also have some updates of the versions because this standards tend to change and uh, new versions are released uh, so i will write this down BS7608 if I remember correct is the number and uh, it is in our list uh, but uh, the more requests I have the higher is the priority I have about 25 standards to add now uh, I cannot promise that this will be immediately implemented but uh, there's been a couple of requests so I will write it down and uh, yeah we will have that in the future but uh, I'll need to, I'll, I'll send you a message, by the way, three. So, uh, uh, we'll discuss this one in detail as well, but it's coming. Uh, other, another question is, uh, are all standards included in the software or is each standard is, uh, uh, uh in the independent model when you buy a license? Mm, nice question. I think this is kind of questions we need to add to the frequently asked questions uh, section in our website, yeah. because um, at the very beginning uh, of uh, our design life, we are developing the software for uh, 13 years, I believe, already. And uh, at the very beginning, everything was in one package, in one library. But now we have so many that not all of our customers are in need of everything. So. Uh, they say, okay, I need only fatigue. I don't need plate buckling and other stuff. Uh, can I have this? And yes, it is possible to have as the verifier module, which is not a, a one dedicated check, but group of checks. If you do only fatigue checks, you can have as the verifier uh, fatigue module. If you do only uh, plate buckling or joint check or beam member checks, it is grouped into the modules and it's possible to have this one. Uh, however, if you need at least two, like uh, beams and uh, welds, it's already smarter to, to have a full uh, version of the software, but it's possible to split onto the modules. Thanks for your question. Yeah. Also, you can uh, not only buy, but uh, rent software for some limited period of time. Yep. If it's, uh, yeah, one, uh, or yeah, for the I project. Could... Yeah, I see uh, two more questions uh, on the uh, chat and some in a private message. W one question is, is there a, an option to calculate hotspot stress values in SDC verifier? Can you share documentation about this if you have this capacity? This is a great question. And while I am, yeah, really enjoying this conversation here, while I'm speaking with you, I will show you the, uh, sneak peek into the interface of SDC Verifier for the future. Uh, this was one of the most common questions, uh, hotspot interface for SDC Verifier, and we finally added this. It is not public yet, but in new, so we are planning to release new version of the software in about a month, I think six weeks or something like that, six to nine basically and but it's already done it's now passing the internal testing and so on so in the new version of the software in the interface of weld finder you will have hotspot stress options and it will be possible for every weld part to determine and calculate the hotspot stress based on uh, different uh, formulas reference formulas either it's the 
part of the reference thickness or it's a certain distance uh, for the reference point you are determining the stresses we are doing the interpolation of the uh, stresses to the hotspot point and we are using this hotspot stresses in the uh, fatigue checks so yes i'm happy to say that it's finally possible if you would like to try it immediately just send me a message i don't know who asked that and i will give you an access to the beta version of the software to the pre-released version if you need this now if you will need it for the future public version is coming uh, in uh, six to nine weeks well yeah thanks uh, uh one more questions in the chat uh, it's more theoretical questions. How is remaining life uh, calculated? Is it only based on miners' rules and corresponding SN curve? Or is there a linear uh, elastic fracture mechanics approach where the starting point uh, is the initial crack length? Yes, this is a deterministic fatigue. By, based on palm minor rule and SN of method, so the first thing. We are not doing the crack propagation analysis here. This is just, uh, yeah, deterministic fatigue based on minor's rule and SN serves. Thanks for that nice question. Uh, yeah, one moment, please. Uh, here's a few question, more questions. Is uh, what is the maximum amount of load sets possible to create? uh well as i said uh, it is fairly unlimited i have customers who create about four thousand of cases and uh, it's just a matter of calculation time so you can create as many uh loading scenarios as it's necessary for your evaluation i believe we have tested it with up to ten thousand of combinations but the answer is it's unlimited Okay, thanks. Uh, can I assign custom SN curve to a weld? Uh, yes, uh, you can create a characteristic. So it's basically in, when you created the standard, you have input data and there are characteristics, uh, sorry, not characteristic, but classification, and you can create custom classification. So you can create a custom standard, make add and include your own uh, your own uh, values for your own standard table of the SN serve. And you can also edit the standard ones, so you can create uh, a different values if you would need to. So it's possible to create custom SN serves. Mm -hmm. Start standards. Uh, one more is how the result of the fatigue cal calculation are stored. Uh, yeah, this is a good question because sometimes it's time consuming to do this calculation. So within the software, we have the result manager, uh, if that's what you mean. So it's possible to, after you run the calculation one, store them in the file in the route library, share it with the, the customer or colleague and reattach the results to the FEA model. And also uh, it is possible if your customer doesn't have SDC verifier somehow, it is possible to share, uh, to, to store the output, so to store the plot into FEMAP and to keep the just a nice colored picture in FEMAP model, for example, or you can keep the results and present the results with SDC verifier reporting. So multiple ways to present and store the results. Mm, I don't see... Uh... Any new questions? Maybe if someone wants to ask by the voice, you could unmute yourself. We had already more than 10 minutes of questions. Yeah, but... It's rarely like that. Uh, so I'm happy to have such a open conversation. Thanks. Okay, if there are, well, I assume that there will might be more questions. So don't hesitate to visit our uh, social media uh, call me, send me an email. I'm always open for conversation, cooperation, or helping you to solve your problem or your customer's problem. Uh, thank you for attending this session. It was great to speak to you. And for those joining us from United States, have a great day. And we are going to wrap up our afternoon here in Europe. Thanks again. And uh, we'll speak again soon, I hope.
Yeah, we will send you a recording as soon as possible with, uh, with a report file. And yeah, have a nice day. Thanks. Bye-bye.